A few months back, I read George Saunders' latest collection of short stories called Liberation Day. Now, an important background point here, I often describe George Saunders as my favorite living writer. He's a major reason I started writing fiction again after a despairing experience in a college creative writing class. I have another video about that if you're curious. When I discovered George Saunders, I was 22 and an admin at a nonprofit where I ate $1 soup at the subsidized cafeteria for lunch every day and saved the cup because the next day I could refill it and save a dollar without anyone noticing. <laughs> so I'd eat lunch for 50 cents. I'd leave work every day at five o'clock sharp to get to my second full-time job bartending, and still I was barely making ends meet. So the whole 50 cent soup situation felt very lucky. During these lunch breaks over my 50 cent cup of soup, I read and dreamed about being an author. One day I started reading a short story in The New Yorker. I don't know how I got my hands on a New Yorker. I definitely didn't subscribe to it. it. must've been lying around. Anyway, not only was I late to return to my desk, but I found myself actually crying in the subsidized cafeteria. That story was called Com Com and it was by George Saunders. And I was sitting there thinking, oh my gosh, a short story can do that? Fiction can do this? On my Facebook profile, which was the only social media platform besides Twitter that existed at the time, I changed the religion field to link to that story. That's how spiritually uplifted and blown away by a single short story I felt. Later that year, I had my first idea for a story and I started writing fiction again. Now, that was, 17 years ago. Since then, I have read all of George Chandra's work. In his latest collection of short stories, Liberation Day, um, he you know, charmed me as usual. And yet the reason I'm sharing this background of how fangirl I am over him as a writer is that I had an experience when I was reading this book that I think is actually an important reminder for all of us as writers. I reached a point of the first story in the collection. It's the book's title story, it's called Liberation Day. I reached a point in this story where for a moment I was bored. I was, I was bored. And because I was bored, I started to skim. The thoughts in my head were very reprimandy as I caught myself doing this. Mary, why can't you focus? Why aren't you paying attention? This is your favorite author. You're skimming, you know, your mind starts to drift as soon as the story gets historical. It must be all the reality TV you've been watching. It's like eating your brain. In other words, I immediately took my mind drifting as an indication that there was something wrong with me. Because of course it couldn't be that there was something, I don't know, in that story that didn't resonate with me in a way that didn't have to do with something I was doing wrong. <laughs> the second time it happened, in the same story, I thought, wait a second, I'm actually a little bit bored right now. And maybe it was that simple. Maybe even my favorite author had written a story with a couple of parts that I found a little bit boring. When I work with writers, so much of our conversation is about how to trust themselves as writers to trust themselves, to make decisions, to trust themselves, to come back later and recognize problems and fix them, to trust themselves, to have a decent enough idea in the first place, one worth seeing through. And we can get better at trusting ourselves as writers by trusting ourselves as readers. When you read, I don't care if it's capital L literature, you're allowed to not like it. You're allowed to get bored sometimes. And when you don't like it, or you do get bored, notice specifically what it is you're experiencing. Is it boredom or is it confusion? Are you having to work too hard? Maybe you just don't feel anything. Is it because of the way the sentence is structured or is it something else? Once you identify the reaction, see if you can pinpoint why. What is the author doing that is creating this experience you're having? This is such a good way to learn and also to practice trusting yourself. I know why I was bored in certain parts of that story. It's because he was describing a musical production the characters were performing in a way that to me in that moment felt more like a script treatment than a story. Now, I'm sure others will love these parts. I didn't. And recognizing that reaction from myself as valid is important for figuring out how I want to write and what I might want to avoid for myself. Because as Toni Morrison said, we write the books we want to read. As a writer, 
Your ideas are valid and you have to view them that way if you want to write them. And one way to practice doing that is to recognize that as a reader, your opinions are valid too. These are not unrelated concepts. Even if it means that your very favorite author occasionally writes a paragraph that you find a little bit boring. Speaking of writing, are you writing a book or do you wanna write a book? Because if so, I would love to hear from you. When I'm not writing, my mission is to help writers write their dream books. I love it. And if you're curious to know more, I have a video walking you through my four notebooks method for writing a novel. You can get that video along with my free template for using the four notebooks method to write your novel by applying to my program, The Book Incubator at the link below. It's a 12 month MFA alternative and the application is just two questions. I just ask you to tell me a little bit about you and your book or your book idea. It'll take you less than five minutes. So go to the link below or go to thebookincubator.com. I really hope to hear from you.